On this channel, it is no secret that I am not the biggest fan of social media. And these days, everybody and their mother knows about all the downsides of social media. It wastes your time with these time-sucking algorithms. It collects your personal data and sells it to advertisers. And in my videos, I try to discourage people from using social media. And of course, I think that services like Facebook and Twitter are a waste of time. But I don't even like the open source alternatives like Mastodon. I just think that all of social media is a pretty big waste of time. And yet, in spite of all of this, here I am on one of the biggest social media platforms on the internet, YouTube. So am I just a giant hypocrite or what's going on? And I do have to start this video by saying that I do have a love-hate relationship with YouTube because let's look at all the good parts of YouTube. Obviously, you can learn just about anything on YouTube. So you can learn anything from programming, Linux, on my channel, of course. You can learn fitness, you can learn philosophy, and just as a wealth of information, you can learn so much from YouTube. It is really a great platform. And let's not be pretentious here. You don't even have to learn things. Just as an entertainment source, YouTube is great. I vastly prefer it to watching something like Netflix. But of course, even if YouTube is not what you would traditionally think of as a social media platform, you probably think of something like Facebook, but YouTube has all of the downsides that social media has. So YouTube has the addictive algorithm, which is literally designed by some of the highest paid engineers in the world to get you to spend as much time on their platform as possible. So don't feel too bad if you're always finding yourself spending too much time on YouTube. That was literally how the current form of it was designed. Not to mention all of the collecting of your personal information that Google does. But in this video, I'm not going to rail on YouTube too much. You probably know a lot of the problems with it already. And if you're like me, and if you don't have monk-like discipline, then you probably end up spending more time on YouTube than you would want. After all, the recommendations are very good. And just to click on the homepage, and you can spend hours and hours just going down every rabbit hole that you could think of. And that's one of the biggest problems I had with YouTube. Even if I was just coming here to watch one or two videos, it would just become a time sink as I just click on video after video and just end up wasting my entire day away. I'm just a normal person and I can be addicted to YouTube as much as anybody else. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can mitigate that as much as possible and give you some ideas to get all of the good parts of YouTube without all of the bad parts. And so, of course, the biggest problem with YouTube is just all of the distractions that are in front of you at all times. And so, of course, if you click on any video, you're going to see a sidebar on the right with a whole bunch of recommended videos. If you click on the home button, you'll get a giant list of recommendations. And so the biggest change that we can make to YouTube is just to remove the algorithm. And that's what I've done right here. So if I click on one of these videos right here, Typically, you would expect to see a sidebar full of recommendations, but you might see it try to load in and then it just hides it by default. That is thanks to this browser extension I have right here called Unhook. And I would recommend this. It is very normie friendly. It is available for Chrome, Firefox, and anything else. And it's just going to remove all of the recommendations. And so if I click on the home button right here, it's just going to take me to my subscriptions feed. It's not going to take me to the homepage. So this is just a chronological list of all of the channels I've subscribed to. And you get all of this by default whenever you install this. There are some options here so you can configure it how you would like. So you can hide the home feed, redirect it to the subscriptions. You can hide the end screen cards. You can even hide comments if you want. If you're one of the people that just spends way too long reading the comments, or maybe you're like me and you have ADD, and you start reading the comments before you even finish the video, you can disable them, but I do find that they have a lot of helpful information a lot of the time, so I can't really bring myself to hide them completely. But this just allows you to hide almost all of the distracting features of YouTube, so you can remain focused on whatever you came to this website for, instead of just hopping from video to video. And of course, there's a million and one extensions like this that will clean up your YouTube and make it less distracting. This is just my favorite. And if you're a little bit more technical savvy, then you don't even need this extension. You can use something like uBlock Origin and set some rules just to hide all of the elements that have something in them. So I can open up my uBlock Origin right here, open up the settings, go to my filters, and you can write some custom filters like this. 
So I'm hiding all the elements that contain some recommendations, like this is the home page right here, and the secondary is the sidebar with all the recommendations on the video page. So you can even do something simpler like that if you would prefer. And already this is going to save you a lot of time. Now we don't have any recommendations. And for your phone, if you also watch a lot of YouTube on your phone, I would really recommend installing NewPipe. So NewPipe is a YouTube client. It is an open source YouTube client where you can watch all your subscriptions and search for videos like you normally would, but it also doesn't have the dreaded recommendation feed. And you can toggle and disable a whole bunch of other features like you can turn off the comments as well. And I'll leave a link to the website in the description. It's not on the Google Play Store. There is a fake version on the Google Play Store, so be careful. But you would have to download the APK file from their website, or you can also install it with F-Droid, which is a repository of open source software for Android phones. I would highly recommend that and just deleting your official YouTube app off your phone. For iOS, this is only for Android, unfortunately. So for iOS, you are a little bit on your own. I don't actually have any recommendations for you. And I've heard of alternative apps that you can install that might give you something close to new pipe. But as I don't use iOS, I can't really give you any specific recommendations. If anybody has any ideas, you can leave a comment and help somebody else out if you know of any good ones. But if you are on Android, I definitely recommend checking out NewPipe. And so this is already pretty good, but if you want to go even further, you can use an RSS reader to get your YouTube content delivered straight to you. You can cut out the middleman. You don't even have to go to YouTube.com. So I have an RSS reader that looks something like this. And this is just an RSS reader in my terminal called Newsboat. If this looks a little bit scary, there are graphical RSS readers that will look a lot nicer than this. There's a whole bunch of different ones, so I won't really recommend a specific one. But if you go and search for one, then you will undoubtedly find a bunch of good ones. But for this example, I'm going to use RSS reader Newsboat. And if you don't even know what RSS is, it's basically this old technology that has been around since the blogging days. And so instead of going out and visiting individual blogs, you can kind of pull them all into one central location with RSS. And you can do the same thing for YouTube channels as well. And it's not immediately obvious how to do this, but you're going to want to get the RSS feed URL for all of the channels that you're subscribed to and then import them into your RSS reader. So in my case, for my RSS reader, I can put in all the URLs here. And in any RSS reader, you're just going to paste in a link and then it will be able to read from that. And so first, let me just show you how this works. In my specific case, I am using this. And so I can go into my videos. I have a subscription feed, basically the same way I would see it on YouTube. Let's say I wanna watch this video, I can go into here. I can click on the link to watch it in YouTube. But I even have this configured so I don't even have to open up YouTube. I can type in a command and it opens up an MPV uh, video player right here, which is actually a lot more convenient than going to youtube.com and opening up the whole website in a web browser, more private as well. And so this is not going to be a whole video on Newsboat. I want to do another video on this in the future, but I just want to show you how I get something like this set up. And first things first, you're going to have to find a link to the RSS feed for all of these. So for my RSS reader, I can open it up like this and I have a list of all the channels I'm subscribed to. This is a link to the RSS feed. And the way you find this, it's a little bit difficult to find because YouTube kind of hides it a little bit. What you can do is go to someone's channel page. Let's use mine, for example. So let's just open up this. You can just right click here and click view page source, of course. And you want to search for, it's going to be something like channel underscore ID. And we can skip around until we find it. I think it's going to be with an equal sign right here. They do change it every once in a while, so this may not be the most up-to-date way to get it. But they have an RSS URL right here. You can just copy and paste this entire thing and paste it into your RSS reader. And that's going to be all you need to get it set up. And if you can't find the URL for whatever reason, there's a bunch of websites like this where you can just paste in the URL of the YouTube channel and it will give you the channel ID right here. And you would just copy this and then replace the channel ID here with that. But if you don't want to manually copy every single channel ID for every single channel that you're subscribed to, maybe you're subscribed to a whole bunch of different channels and that can take a long time. There is a service called Google Takeout, which will allow you to export all of your YouTube data. 
So you would go to this link. I'll leave a link to this in the description and click all of YouTube data. Let's just deselect all of this and get the subscriptions right here. Click OK, click Next Step. You can email it or save it to your Google Drive. And once you export it and download it, you will get a CSV file, something like this. And you can open this in any text editor and just copy the URLs right here, the URL and the name of the channels. You can also open this in any spreadsheet program. So if you have OpenOffice, LibreOffice, or something like that, you can open it with their spreadsheets program. Copy all of those to your RSS reader, or in some cases, there's probably an import option on a lot of popular RSS readers. So that is an easier way to do it if you would prefer. But if you want something like this, like if you want this news bullet configuration that I have, I will leave a link to my config in the description. Like I said, a video on this coming soon. But with something like this, now you can have all of the benefits of YouTube without all of the flashy colors and lights. So these days I only really watch YouTube through my subscription feed or from actually searching for something. Of course you can still search for things and that is still a great way to find new channels on YouTube. So if you're a little bit scared of weaning yourself off the recommendation algorithm, just know that it's not that bad. You can still get all the enjoyment out of YouTube that you normally would. And there's nothing wrong with wasting time on YouTube, but if you do it, you should be doing it intentionally instead of being at the whims of the YouTube algorithm. Plus there are other benefits to this. Now you no longer have to ring the stupid bell icon in order to get your subscriptions. If you have an RSS feed like this, you're not going to miss any videos. And it's going to be more private as well. So if you do like me and you watch videos without even going to YouTube, then they're not going to be able to track you and collect all kinds of different data about you, which is good. I don't really like telling Google everything about me. And I think you'll find that YouTube is a much better place once you remove all of the dark patterns. And if you like the video, then subscribe preferably from your favorite RSS reader.